The Benin Kingdom was one of the greatest and most highly developed states in the central hinterland of West Africa. It was, I beg your pardon, it dates back to even the 11th century until it was finally annexed by the British Empire in 1897. Known for its great history and arts and culture, the Benin culture has been studied all around the world. And today we have Imaswen Amumye Izodwahi, who is an arts and culture enthusiast, and we are discussing the importance of the Benin history in modern times. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very fine. I love your regalia. What is your outfit, please? Yeah, it's one of the uh, dressing okay. um, of the Benin people. Okay. But, but this dressing was um, inspired by the Catholic priest. Oh. The Roman Catholic priest that um, came to Benin at about the 15th century. So, of course, uh, the Benin people had a strong interaction with the Portuguese around about 15th century. And uh, uh, we also learned some of their ways of life. And uh, I think this is one of it. Amazing. All right, so we know you as a, an art and culture enthusiast of um, a Joe culture. Why did you decide to go down this path? Well, I did my first degree in Ife. Oh, okay. So when you school in Ife, um, because of the cultural ties between the Benin people and the Ife people, mm -hmm. you'll be reminded almost every day that the Benins came from Ife. So of course, um, I didn't do history, it's just a hobby. Okay. So I needed to get closer to a bit of my history and uh, me doing that, uh, made me to realize a lot of the history of the pe of my people that I know today. Okay, so I think we're going to open with um, the general line of thought of this conversation. What is the importance of the main history in modern times, especially because it seems like it's deteriorating. Yes. Nobody's talking about it, nobody's really going back to our roots, and the Benin has such rich history. Yeah. So what do you think is the importance right now in this day and time? Well, <clears throat> before, before I answer that question, uh, I like, if, it, if it's okay, I'd like to make an observation. Please go ahead. I have seen a lot of videos in recent times uh, dating the Benin history of Benin Kingdom to 11th century. That's not true. Mm -hmm. All right, 11th century is the beginning of the second dynasty okay. of the Benin people or Benin Kingdom. Obviously, the people exist long before the monarchy. The monarchy, it's, it's a process that emerged from the people. Mm -hmm. Alright, so before that 11th century, the Benins have had documented 31 kings that reigned for a period of about 854 years. Okay, so this is the Ogiso era you're referring to? No, 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 that's the Ogiso era, yes, okay. beautiful. So the eras you guys are now referring to that the Benin kingdom started from 11th century is the Oba era, so which yeah. is not true because uh, we did the mathematic calculation two years ago of how old the Benin kingdom have really survived. Okay. And um, we discovered it's about 2,056 years. Wow. So that Amazing. makes it that makes it the second oldest surviving monarch in the world, wow. and the oldest surviving in Africa. So it's it's wrong for you to classify this history as about a 900 years old history. So I think I needed to make that observation. Okay. So do you not think that what they mean by it dates back to the 11th century is accounting from when it became? when he started having regular monarchs as opposed to the Ogisos that he had previously? No, no, that's not, when you when you use the word regular, um, that, that I, don't, I don't know what you meant by that. But when history is being documented and a person you can say, this is Ogiso or Dolige, mm -hmm. this is what he did, mm -hmm. this is how many wars he fought. So, well, that is documented. And when you mean regular, the, the same pattern of kingship in the second dynasty was the same pattern in the first dynasty of primogenitia of the, uh, uh, the first surviving son taking the kingship from from the father so i think that's the same case so when you said the f second dynasty is regular and the first wasn't regular and i will ask i mean by regular i mean regular things i mean like the normal monarchs we have both in yoruba in Igbo. I mean, no, regular monarchy, uh, monarchs well, are irregular or regular, <laughs> irregular kings. Well, even at that, Benin monarchs are quite distant from every other monarch in, in Nigeria or probably in the world. 
We started the principle of primogeneture about 650 years before the British started, yes. Amazing. So the Benin monarch is about 700 years, over 700 years older than the British monarch. So we've already mastered primogeneture right from the inception in about 40 BC when we had our first king. This is the present king is 71st king mm -hmm. of Benin, 40th in second dynasty, but across the two dynasties, 71st. So it's been regular all through. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. All right, so back to our question. Okay. Seeing as we are so into, the Benin history is beautiful. Anybody that's studied it, no matter how little, how much that you've gotten, you find out that's one of the most beautiful stories you'd ever read. Why do you think for some reason it's been ab abandoned? In many schools, even in their state, history is not even being studied in schools, especially secondary schools, for yeah. one thing. So why do you think it seems like people are leaving the history or are not paying enough attention? Yeah, I, I think first that's a Nigeria problem. It has nothing to do with Edo State, why history was uh, abolished. I don't know, whatever reasons they have. But if I want to give you one of the reasons, that's because of a series of controversies. That okay. uh, Now, would you not tell a Benin man that he came from Yoruba man, he's not going to agree? Would you not tell an Ife man that Benin didn't come from there? He's not going to agree. So, it's about supremacy issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, most that part of supremacy issues is revolved around the southern part of Nigeria. Even if you listen closely, for what has been happening in Yoruba about the Alafin and the Olni supremacy. So how are you going to tell the kids that Alafin is more supreme, superior than Olni and um, tell the kids that Olni is more superior than the Alafin? So these are some of the issues that probably could have uh, uh, could have tell on the government to sort of die down the study of history, but history is very important. Um, if, it's, if it wasn't important, I would have picked a lot of interest in, in, in having to read Benin history for about three years now, even if that's not what I studied in the university. Now, history is very, it's very important because I'm going to use myself as a very practical example. Okay. Uh, like um, the sort of thinking I had about three, four years ago is different from the thinking that I have now. Okay. Um, okay. That's because um, in that space of time, I have meant the real demonstration of history and what my ancestors achieved in building one of the most uh, dynamic and one of the most sophisticated civilization the world has ever known. And I realized that they did that because of the spirit of excellence and not mediocrity. So Benins are not great anymore because of we have a lot of mediocres running the affairs of all, all ramifications of Benin. So, and it want to push me to be, to, to sort of have this strength to come at top of whatever I do because I know that's what the spirit, the, my ancestors had that made them build that civilization. So history is really very important in the minds of people. It has a way of shaping the minds and sharpening the minds as well. So, so that you can be able to pursue every of your future and there was no info where that your ancestors had built a legacy that was unrivaled at one point in time. And when you now look at yourself, that uh, for about a period of 1,900 years, you were, so, you were a sovereign nation. You had civilizations, uh, one of the greatest mechanical work, uh, sorry, earthworks prior before the mechanical era, uh, the, 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 the Benin moat or the Benin war. And we have the great Benin um, moat. We have a complex uh, geometrical architectural pattern that uh, the only sort of civilization that had that architectural pattern is the Roma Empire, the old Roma Empire. And knowing fully well that your ancestors did this and they didn't need the Europeans to tell them that, to show them that these things can be done, they did it naturally out of their natural instinct. It's a propelling factor for the modern generation of the Benin people to want to study, take a closer look at these people, how they did it, and want to walk in that light. And not just want to develop the modern state, but also take a cue from how it was done in the past and trying to find a way of modernizing the whole scope of the idea. Amazing. All right, if you're joining us right now on Facebook, we're streaming live on Facebook. I have a couple of comments. Remember, you can drop your comments and, of course, we read each and every one of them. Dominion OK Hey says, good morning, ladies. Good morning, good morning Dominion. Dominion. I have Abiodun Rufus who says, that's our AVA coordinator. 
General GBD Worldwide. We, the Abuja Chapter, salute your leadership, sir. Um, Marking Day says, I love art. The guest speaks very well. Thank you so much, Marking Day. And Princess Omoshiego Ero says, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So, these are the comments that we have right now. Do well to drop as many comments as you like, and we will read each and every one of them. Okay, so now you were speaking about some nationalistic movements, basically how we should believe in ourselves because our ancestors have done so much. How do we increase the spread of this information? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know how we're going to do that, but uh, personally, I think I'm trying to do that. Of course, I have a group called um, GBD, Association of Great Benin Descendants. Oh, okay. um, what that group, it's, it's been established for about two years now. Amazing. All the group was, was to first of all identify all the descendants of Benin who for one historical reasons or the other left Benin a long time ago. Because when you talk about Benin Empire, you look at its geographical scope and you understand how huge it, it was, not it is. It was, and um, knowing fully where it covered almost the entire southern part of Nigeria, then to Benin Republic, to Togo, and then to Ghana. So uh, knowing fully where that, that that was huge, that uh, the Benin Empire once got to Ghana, not because I read it in book. I was in I was in Accra about two months ago, so to meet with some of the descendants of Benin, the Asian Gar people, and they attested to the fact that they are Benin migrants. And so, knowing fully well that they are Benin people scattered all over the world, I'm sure there's an horrible person here as well, so also traces their ancestry to Benin and our cross. There are about 42 of those ethnic nationalities present in Nigeria who traces their ancestry to Benin. So we first of all, my group in there to first of all identify them and, and, and find a way to, to harness them so that we can reignite that brotherhood. Now, true, that means we can be able to start teaching history because once you know the world, the history, it's because of uh, the lack of the knowledge of history that makes an Asian person think that he's different or she's different from a Benin person, or an one person is different from Benin, mm -hmm. or probably an Ishakiri. Not, not all Ishakiris now, just the royal and the noble family of the Ishakiris that migrated from Benin, all right, across Isoko, Urubo, and all that. I'm sorry. So it, history finds a way of reigniting the concept of having to bring all these people together, that they all have the same singular ancestry, and that's the concept. So when we bring these people together and find a way of pushing history back to the minds of these people, with or without the state or the federal government, we still will be able to have a very uh, wide range of coverage of people to be able to tell the history to that. Uh, politics might have sort of divided us because uh, at that time before the the Benin Empire lost the sovereignty in 1897 so there was nothing like states like a do state delta state it was just one Benin Empire and everybody in there were all part and parcel of the making of the empire and they were all Benin people in their own right so that's okay, a concept you can join, you can ask okay something. history has shown that the Benin was the home of artifacts burns, carving. So why hasn't the modern day government capitalized on that to use it as a, a medium of job creation? Well, uh, first, uh, I don't think the, the problem, it's more complex okay. than you think it is. It's not just the government creating policies. For example, if you, if you uh, studied biochemistry in the university and the government comes to you and tell you that oh come can you make bronze out of these materials you don't know jack and jill about faith i think that's the problem in the asian benin once you we have different age groups so you get a particular age group then you you've been enrolled sort of into the act of bronze casting okay. and for bronze casting like iguneo they are not like you enroll people. It's more like a family legacy. Like, just like there are some families, you see them, they are all into oil dealings. That's how the branch casting was in the ancient Benin. So once you're from that family, you're from that family, you're from that family. So once you're born, the first thing you'll be taught is how to make these branch castings. All right, so people don't pick interest in all these things anymore. And... 
I don't think there's nothing the government can do about this. The first step is to make people pick interest first. All right, when people pick interest in bronze castings, in ivory carvings, in uh, wood carvings, um, uh, sometimes we, we only know about the bronze because it's something that is well peculiar to the whole people, but there are different guilds. There are over, there are over 150 guilds of carvings, okay. all right? So we have uh, wood carvers, Igbesava. We have the ivory carvers. We have Uboha. We have Uboka. These were different guilds that do specific duties for the services of the Oba and the kingdom in generally. So people should first of all be educated to know that these things are important. That's how the Obakans were the first of blessed memory was quoted to be the one of the worthiest king of this part of the world because they had surplus of ivory. We had so there was a time we have so much elephant. Uh, if you if you cross the Ukoba Hill, there's a community called Ored Beni. That Ored Beni it needs elephant. That Oe means the uh, sort of the center of elephant. So that's what they were doing there. So they had a lot of ivory castings. And, and so a lot of them were sold during the time of the trading of the, the Benins, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Dutch, and all that. So they made a lot of money from it. So the first step for the government to do is not creating just policies that enhances people to start making bronze. You first of all have to create policies that inspires the mind of these people to know that bronze casting can be profit making. Okay. All right, when you do that, people started to get interest in this. And when they start getting interest in these things, then you can further build on that. The first thing is to make the Benin people pick interest okay. in that activities. Okay. Okay. So, um, we have a comment from Dumi and OKK. So he says, my God, the master knows a lot. Knowing Benin history is amazing. This is so good attracting tourism. What is being done to uphold this culture, to impact the knowledge of the Benin history? Because I believe history makes you confident of who you are, what you can do and what you can achieve, and the level of preeminence one has. So what is being done on a personal note? What are you doing to uphold it? I think that is why he started the organization. I yeah, think. yeah. the organization has done so much. First, uh, I was able to confidently told you um, how old the Benin Empire has survived. That's because we take practical step in, first of all, knowing the history of the land. Then we now have a group where we can pass this history as raw as, as it is to the people. And um, we do programs, seminars, to educate the minds of the young lads coming through the rank. And um, we are hoping in the next few months that we can start going to secondary school to educate them, like catch them young. Okay. People really. People really have to know that there are some of these social vices now in Benin land that was abominable before we lost uh, our, our sovereignty in 1897. So um, there are things that ordinarily people now do in Benin that wasn't, was never there. Uh, well, I must have also mentioned them. You have uh, areas of cultism. You have uh, a lot of persons think that the whole prostitution idea is affiliated to the Edo people, but that's way, way wrong because even the Edo people doesn't even have an indigenous name for prostitution. For prostitution, that shows that other other tribes brought it. Hmm. So oh. that means. Um, so we are trying to tell the people that in Old Benin, as you're sitting when I cross cross you like that, yeah. like that. So it's, it's an abomination, I must make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. It was, they had moral institution mm -hmm. that was second to the known in the world. And when those moral institutions have been trampled upon by these people, you will classify them as people who are not really knowledgeable about the true culture of the land. And, and that's why I always tell people history is life or there are things I cannot do because I know my ancestors never did them. So that's because I know these things. So we have to make the people know these things so that they can find a way 
of understanding that uh, the legacies built by the ancestors has been trampled upon by uh, decisions they have made consciously or unconsciously. So I think, um, I know we have a lot to do, but one thing I can assure you is that our sovereignty that was lost to the British killed us. All right, and um, so the whole idea of the Europeans, if anybody should be mad at what the British did to Nigeria or to it's the Benin people, because everything that we had was taken from us, not just our artifacts, or scattered all over the world, but our moral institutions were devalued. And um, let me not bring religion, because religion became one of the tools that was used to eventually kill all the bad bonds that sustained what we were in the time past. But a lot of persons are now advocating that we have to take us back, not take us back to whatever you want to call it. Some might say the primordial era. No, there was never any era that was primordial. That's why in Benin, they'll tell you that there was never a time that the Benin people won plantain leaf. In other words, they are trying to say, tell you that we have always been civilized all through, all through the years. All right, so we're trying to find a way to get history to the minds of our people so that it can change the sort of the orientation the present they have. Okay. All right, so speaking of interest in terms of building people's interest, now notice that this generation of people are not so interested in history and history is very important to our time. They would rather um, um, do ICT and every other thing that's you know in vogue right now. How do we build interest for the young minds to want to learn, especially the youths, who want to know about the Benin history and its relevance and why it's important to them? How do we build that interest? All right, I think I have to give you a very practical example as okay. well. Well, as a young lad, when I was coming up, I had inclination towards um, mathematics, mm. all right? So, and um, my father wanted me to do something that has to do with, that's related to biology. Okay. All right, H how would they be able to break that gene so for someone who grew up with having a very strong ma ma mathematical background, how is it gonna make him love biology? So he had to start telling me the problems that face the world that mathematics might not solve, but in heart wise, medicine could solve, all right? So he needed to show me practical demonstration of how biological, biology could solve those problems and of mathematics, all right? So I started to pick interest. When you, ha you have to show people what history can do to the life of a human, that's when they can pick interest. If people think that what history is all about is just to remind you of the past. History is well deeper than just talking about the event of the past. History connects you to the soul of all your ancestors. Of course, um, I'm a proud Benin person. So in Benin, our religion, it's um, ancestral worship. We believe so much in our ancestors. And um, when people try to criticize that, why do you guys believe so much in the worship of your ancestors, not worshiping of the ancestors? We, uh, the Benin sort of, right from time immemorial, understands that there are disparity between ancestors and God. All right, so we had all shrines where it's been where you propitiate your ancestors and we have a shrine where you propitiate God Almighty. So we live in the existence of God. Only that we find a way of connecting to our ancestors because through them we get guidance, through them we get the knowledge of how they were able to solve problems in, in the hold. I think that's the same concept. When you connect people, show them the practical demonstration of what history could do to people, to do to life. Uh, when you show, when you tell people that uh, um, in about a space of three years, the Benin people came together to dig a moat as big as Benin City, surrounding the entire Benin City, mm -hmm. just for sort of a, a wallery uh, concept to, 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 to wait off invaders, then you, you wonder that nobody can do that in the present day, Nigeria, that how you, can you dig the Benin mouth? And, but when you show them that these guys built legacies that were very strong upright, then show practical demonstration of how it worked that time. They, were, they are bound to have a rethink 
of having to connect to this history of their people and using it to build a stronger future for themselves. Amazing. Okay, we're going to have to wrap up this conversation real quick. So uh, I think I want to end with this. What did you think, what, what would you have as your final thoughts for this entire conversation? What would you want the people out there to know about you, your belief, and of course the Benin traditions and Benin history? Well, um, I want to tell the viewers that um, their ancestors, or the Benin viewers now, basically, that the ancestors built one of the greatest civilization ever known to the black world, all right? And that's because they were patriotic. That's because they had strong moral foundation. That's because they had excellence. That's the key word, all right? If, you, if you're a wood carver, you are an extreme good wood carver. That is why when you take the bronze casting of the Benin, beside other bronze casters from other regions of the world, as stands out. Mm -hmm. So it cannot stand that if those things were casted by mediocres. It was casted by people who really understood the concept of brass or bronze casting. So these guys were excellent in their duties, communal duties, kingdom duties, or empire duties. So the Benin should start breaking forth from the concept of their mediocrity that when you get to level five and probably you're not in 200,000 and you just want to stay back, like, oh, I earn 200,000, doesn't matter. You have to go for it. You have to get to the, the very final ladder or even break forth from the final ladder. Mm -hmm. That's how ancestors, built those legacies we are proud of and that's how we can be able to make great being great again. Amazing. This has been an amazing conversation. Oh, it's amazing. And I wish I wish we could go on and on, on, on. but <laughs> maybe we'll continue after the show. Okay, so Derek Rock says, Yeah, there was never a time being people wore leaf because we've always been civilized from the beginning. And finally our last comment. Enoch says, I'm very proud of you, my brother. I'm also proud of him because he's not my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one thing I think every one of us can take home from this conversation is that we should embrace excellence in all ramifications. You should understand that mediocrity should never be accepted in your life and you should always try to break barriers. And speaking of breaking barriers, let me announce to you that this is the last and final episode of the second season of The Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV. I was so, so mm, excited. Okay. Mm, Thank you so much for being here with us for the entire I will begin a brand new season tomorrow, so make sure you join us by 9 a.m. on TSN Algeria TV. My name is Joyce Jukes. And I'm Adriel Omoy Gade. And I'm Joanne Gigbe Fume. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you so very much. And thank you. Have yourself a lovely day. Good morning. Good morning. Bye. Bye.